Hey, what's going on guys? It's Monday, March 27th. Um, sorry it's been a few days uh, since I've uploaded a video. I have a little explanation for that. Uh, I got a little upset yesterday because I was trying to make this video for you guys. It was a 30 minute long video on how to calculate your macros, which kind of ties into some of the events that happened to me on Friday and Saturday. And when I went to edit the video, the, the video was out of sync with my audio and I was getting frustrated and I have to go to sleep early because I got to wake up at three o'clock in the morning to go to work. But anyways, besides that, I wasn't able to make the video the way I wanted it to because my computer is basically out of date. Uh, I need to upgrade my computer because it just can't handle the video editing that I want to do. So I got to make do with what I have for, for the time being until I get my new laptop. So uh, I do apologize for not uploading any videos, but I want to give you guys a um, quick video update on what's going on right now. And I think I found a way to give you the information. It's not going to be pretty, but hopefully you'll get uh, um, some use out of it. Um, so let me go ahead and explain uh, what happened on Friday. So if you guys have been watching my past videos, I was taking a, I was participating in a 21 day shred challenge uh, with Steve Cook. And basically that was my very first paid for program where I was giving my exact macros as far as what I needed to eat during this program. I was given a structured workout plan that planned out every single day for those 21 days of that workout plan that went along with that meal plan, um, including cardio and so forth. Um, so I followed the three, uh, three weeks and I lost a lot of weight. I went from 169 pounds at 19.8% body fat. I dropped down to about 160 pounds at 17.4% body fat. So I lost a lot of weight and uh, about five pounds worth of fat, uh, which is a good thing. So the only thing that the, the uh, at, towards the end of the program, everyone was asking, hey, can I continue to do this program? Uh, for another three weeks or just continue to just stay on this program and the trainers basically said uh, Technically if you're at a higher body fat and you had a lot more fat to lose Yes, you can go on for at least another three more weeks So a total of six weeks before you need to change up your diet because the macros on the diet was really low in carbs really low in fat and isn't designed to sustain uh, the type of workouts that most people are doing or at least on the program so um, towards the end of last week, which would be my week five, because I did push it out, I was planning to do another three weeks on this program, um, I started feeling low energy and I was uh, doing my workouts, I was following my meal plans and I realized in the last week, my weight hasn't moved anywhere. It's staying around 160 and 162. And I think the two pound, two to three pound fluctuation is gonna be water weight. But I'm basically stalled out at about 160 pounds. So I'm not gaining any weight and I'm not losing any weight. So, um, and my energy level is pretty low. So what I've come to decide at, uh, I think it would be beneficial for me to start upping my macros. Um, I know that sounds counterintuitive uh, to some people. They're thinking like, well, why would you eat more if you're not losing weight? Well, the thing is, on that program, I knew that the highest calorie amount, which would be on my high carb day, uh, was 2,000 calories. And that was 380 calories below what my what we call total daily energy expenditure or TDEE, which is my maintenance level uh, of calories that I need to consume to not lose any weight. So your TDEE, your total daily en energy expenditure is the your maintenance level. Um, this calorie amount is the amount of calories you would need to consume to not lose any weight or not gain any weight. This is just to maintain your body weight. And I'm gonna show you guys how to calculate that in just a second. So. Basically, uh, this program was putting me well below under that, and on my low carb days, I was almost close to 1,500 calories on my low carb days. So, hence the extreme cut. Um, you can cut a lot of body fat and weight off with this uh, diet. However, after a prolonged period of time, your body's going to adapt, and it's not going to do any good, and you're actually going to feel even worse, and you're going to you're just not gonna feel well. So I wasn't feeling uh, well and I decided I need to up the up the calories. So 
Uh, I know how to calculate my maintenance level, and my maintenance level is 23, let me, I think I wrote it down, 2,382 calories. So that should be my maintenance level, and obviously on the program I was at 2,000 calories for my high carb day and 1,500 for my low carb day. So you can see that that is an extreme deficit. Um, with any weight loss, just for you guys to know, uh, basically you have your maintenance level which I'm gonna go ahead and explain how to calculate that. At this level is how many calories you need to eat just to maintain your body weight. To lose weight, you need to eat at a deficit. So anything below that, you're gonna start losing weight. Anything above that, you're gonna to start to gain weight. Um, so basically this video, I'm gonna show you how to calculate your macros. This works for anyone if you're trying to lose weight or if you're a skinnier person or a smaller person, you're looking on to put on size and more muscle and you're looking to gain weight, this is how you're gonna track how much you need to eat. So uh, with that being said, um, the last point I need to make is, uh, if you're, most people are probably looking into this to lose weight, like I am. Uh, to lose weight, you need to lose 3,500 calories is equal to one pound. So the safest amount I would probably recommend for you uh, is no more than 500 calorie deficit per day. Uh, if you're a little higher in the body fat range, maybe 24 to 25% or higher, maybe you can cut off a little bit more, maybe like 750 calories, but I probably wouldn't go any more than that. So. Let's just take, let's just say if you were to cut 500 calories off your diet below your maintenance level, if you were to lose or cut 500 calories off your diet every single day for seven days, that's 3,500 calories. So you would be losing one pound of body fat per week. So hopefully you guys get the math. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully you're still with me. All right, with that being said, let's go ahead and move on. So. Since I can't do the picture in picture the way I wanted to, um, I'm, gonna I'm gonna try this out. I did some screenshots of these screens, which are gonna pop up in a little bit, and hopefully I can explain it to you. So the first things first, you guys are gonna go to the website, ifitfitsyourmacros.com, and that's gonna be www.iifym.com. On this website, you can see at my screen here, I've actually circled in green at the top of this, the website. You can just hover your, your cursor over uh, calculators and then it'll drop down these menus and you wanna find the one that's highlighted in yellow if it fits your macros TDEE uh, calculator. And we're gonna go ahead and click on that, okay? On this page, now you're gonna go ahead and scroll down a little bit and you're gonna see um, this chart as far as where you're gonna to need to enter in your data. So I've already put in my information here. So the top part I put, I am a man, age of 33. Yes, I am getting old. Um, height, five foot six. I'm uh, average short Asian. <laughs> um, current weight, 165. I'm actually gonna use the macros I did um, from a while back because I actually, wrote down that information here um, prior to all of this and actually this is probably about two or two or three weeks old so I probably need to readjust this for myself but just for simplicity I'm just gonna go ahead and use this for an example um, if you look down there you're gonna put total uh, for choosing your formula total body weight formula now I recommend you just choose this option to uh, to keep it to keep things simple the other option is lean mass formula um, which if you know your body fat percentage uh, you can use that particular uh, option. Most people don't. Um, I have a body fat analyzer, but I feel like it's not 100% accurate, so I didn't want to use my body fat percentage in this one because I know that that uh, analyzer, it throws off crazy numbers depending on uh, the time of day that I use it and depending on how much water I drink. I could be drinking too little or too much. So go ahead, for the simplicity of it all, choose the total body weight formula. Um, for describe your daily activities, I chose sedentary because most of my day I'm spending at the office, in the cubicle, seated almost all the time. So if you work a desk job, I would choose sedentary. Yeah, the only time I would probably choose light activity or anything else is if you're up and running all day long, maybe you're a doctor or, or a teacher and you got like students and kids running all over the place and you gotta, you're gotta you always on your feet, then you might want to use light activity or something more active. But um, most people I know are pretty sedentary. They're, they're working office jobs. 
Um, exercise output, put the amount of days that you're, you're planning to work out or that you do work out. Um, don't include your rest days. So right now I am currently working out six days a week and I have one rest day. Uh, and I work out, you can look at the bottom right here, uh, 120 minutes total, so that's two hours. That's including cardio. So my cardio is anywhere between 30 and 50 minutes. The rest of it is weight training, okay? And then moving on below, how, how intense is your exercise? I went ahead and chose light. Now, I know my intensity is actually pretty, uh, I would say pretty moderate to intense during my supersets and giant sets, but to keep the numbers realistic, in my opinion, I chose light anyway, because unless you're doing CrossFit and your heart rate is almost at 80% to maximum heart rate all the time throughout your entire workout, I wouldn't choose anything but light. So unless you're doing CrossFit, if you're doing CrossFit or something like that and your heart rate is like 80% of your max and above for the entire workout, you know, choose moderate. moderate. Other than that, um, I would just choose light. The reason why I chose light is like, yes, I go intense, but then it's bodybuilding style work workouts that I'm doing. So I'm lifting weights and then I got 30 to 90 second rest in between and my heart rate actually drops pretty significantly. Um, as you start to progress in your fitness levels and you do more and more cardio, you'll realize that once you hit like, uh, let's say if you're sprinting, your heart rate gets up to like 180 beats per minute, you'll realize that you'll recover a lot faster the more and more you uh, are physically active. So uh, when you're first starting out, you might feel like you're heart is jumping out of your chest and it's taking you a long time you're huffing and puffing as you get more fit your heart rate will drop significantly faster than it did when you first started so uh, that's the reason why i chose light for how intense your exercise is once you select that that's all the information you need click the button at the bottom right that says click here to get your tdee and then you'll get a little pop-up that says enter your email. Now, you don't have to enter your email in there if you don't want to. Uh, you can enter a fake email. I actually use fake email at yahoo.com and that actually went through and I just use fake email as my name. It really doesn't matter. Um, I actually have several email accounts and I use one just for junk that I can just use. That's a legitimate email, but I don't use it anything but for signing up for random stuff. So I just use that. Click through, once it goes through, you will see this screen, you will see your BMR, your basal uh, metabolic rate, and your TDEE, which is your total daily energy expenditure, which is the, the key number that we want to look at. Now, your BMR, what that is, is your, your basal metabolic rate. I think that's right. I think that's what it is. I can't, I'm thinking of off, the, off of memory here, but the, your BMR, um, on here it's showing mine is 1472. So what that is, is that is the total amount of calories you need just to sustain your life. Meaning just to live, to eat or to sleep, to breathe, for your body to function, for your, for your lungs to, to open and close. That is just the minimum, the bare minimum amount you need to eat just to live. Okay, but we're worried about the TDEE here, which is your total daily energy expenditure. So this is factoring um, the amount of exercise and the quantity of exercise that you're working out, uh, plus your age and, and so forth. That's all factored into there. So once we get those numbers, we are going to go to... So once you have that number, that is your TDEE, and that is now what we call your maintenance level. So that number is how many calories you need to eat just to maintain your body weight. So again, if you want to lose weight, you need to eat at a caloric deficit, so a number below that number. If you're trying to gain weight, you need to eat above that number. So how do we calculate that? We're gonna to go to another website here, and this page right here you can see is the macronutrientcalculator.com. First off, you need to decide if you want to do carb cycling or not. Carb cycling, again, is the manipulation of your carbs. So you're going to have some days where it's low carbs, some days that are high carbs. So the point of doing this is to manipulate and control your hormones in your body to basically target and burn fat. So you introduce high carb days. Uh, to build up your glycogen levels, which is the fuel for your muscles, and you're gonna work out. So the, the more intense your workout, you're gonna, the higher intensity of your workouts, your muscles are gonna pull from that pool of energy from the glycogen. Once that's depleted, it's gonna go to your fats. 
So basically on those high carb days is usually my more intense day. So I usually have a high carb day and the day right after I eat uh, all those carbs are usually my most intense day. So it was my leg workouts or like heavy lifting, things like that, um, and high intensity workouts. So I'm gonna use those uh, carbs that I'm gonna eat on those high carb days to make sure that that energy is utilized. On my low carb days, I'm gonna have some steady state cardio. I'm gonna be still working out with uh, similar intensities, but basically the low carb days is to get your system to go, hey, I have no, um, no energy as far as carb goes. Where am I gonna go? It's gonna start looking for fuel. The other fuel that's gonna go for is your fat. So on low carb days, this is where it's gonna burn off the fat. Now, the reason why we go on and off, on and off is when you're at a low, calorie deficit you're eating at low calories your body is really low in energy and basically it's turning to fat as fuel and after about three days so you shouldn't do low carbs more than three days your system starts to um, learn how it's eating and it's going to start thinking oh my gosh I'm starving and it's almost going to go into a starvation mode and at that point your body is going to want to retain whatever food you put in your body and store it as fat. So before that happens, we want to trick your system, throw those carbs back in there with a high carb day. This is just bringing you back up to maintenance. So you're not going to gain weight. You're just refueling your body and your body's like, oh, carbs, I'm going to use that, burn that off. And then all of a sudden you switch back to low and it's like, okay, crap, I need to go burn off my fat again. So your system starts burning off fat. This on and off, on and off between carb cycling, what it does, it really amps up your metabolism and it really amps up the intensity in which your body burns fat. And that's why carb cycling is the number one way to lose weight fast. So um, that's a little rundown on carb cycling. Let's go ahead and get back to this. So what we're gonna do is determine how much you wanna lose. So let's say you want to cut off a pound a week, okay? Um, this is, uh, again, uh, somewhat aggressive, so it's gonna be 500 calories. So what mine was, I think I did my example with 500. So on this page, you'll see daily calories, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to I'm gonna use my number of 2382 and I'm gonna subtract 500. So I'm gonna put 1882 into the calculator and I'm gonna hit calculate. Now down below you're gonna see, it's gonna automatically portion out uh, these sliders here, but uh, what I wanna do is go ahead and make my protein, uh, I adjusted mine to 179. Now. This is where it gets a little tricky. So the way I've been doing it and the way most people should do it, um, you wanna get at least one gram of protein per pound of body weight. So if you weigh 160 pounds, you wanna get a minimum of 160 grams of protein. Um, for more, if you're working out super intense and you're trying to build some muscle while cutting as well, uh, you wanna be a little higher than just one gram. So right now I'm doing 1.1 gram per pound of body weight, so my protein is at 179. Uh, if you want to keep it very simple, uh, most people are just wanting to lose weight uh, at a healthy rate. Just do one gram of protein per pound of body weight. So slide that over until you hit your protein amount. So mine is 179. All right, so now with carbs, uh, what I did was I actually selected my lean body mass because I actually know my body fat percentage roughly and it's about 132 grams uh, of carbs. So what that means is out of my 165 pound weight, uh, that which is lean is 132 pounds, the rest is fat. So I set my low carbs at my lean body mass. Um, safest for you guys, just choose about 30%. Uh, so you can do 30% of your diet's gonna be carbohydrates. So now if you look at the lower left hand corner You'll see total percentage uh, on your screen if you're doing this live It probably doesn't equal 100. So we've adjusted the protein slider or slide We've adjusted the carbohydrates to about 30% uh, Now we got to adjust the fat so it equals 100. 
So what I did was I slid that over and it looks like I'm at 71 grams and that gives me a total of 100%. So if I were to consume 132 grams of carbs, 179 grams of protein and 71 grams of fat, that would equal 1,882 calories. So this is my low carb day. All right, moving on to the next slide, we're gonna go ahead and do my high carb day. So your high carb day is gonna be your TDEE. So this is your maintenance level. So you're bringing your, your calories back to just your maintenance level. So you're not gonna gain or lose any weight. This is just simply to replenish your glycogen levels, which is where your carbohydrate, carbohydrates go to fuel your muscles. So on your high carb day, readjust the slider uh, for your protein so I brought it back to 179 and your fats you want to bring it down to about 20 percent so I took it down to 20 percent so on a high carb day you want to lower your fats and adjust the carbs up on low carb days you'll see the fats come up a little bit and the carbs are coming down and kind of even out on your high carb day basically I drop my fat to about 20 percent usually a safe bet for your fats to keep fat levels low so that puts me at 53 grams and then you're gonna slide the carbohydrates way over to the right until you hit the total percentage of 100 again and for me on this particular plan it's 298 grams of carbs. So my high carb day is gonna be 298 grams of carbs. My protein stays the same. My fats come down a little bit, down to 53. All right, so that's basically how I calculate my macros for my low carb days and my high carb days. So how do I cycle my carb days? So if we move on to the next slide here, I've created this spreadsheet to kind of show you what my carb cycle looks like. So looking at the top, you can see that it's, uh, it shows moderately aggressive. And this is the, the, the carb cycle that I've been on for the last five weeks. So uh, I've gone on high carb day on uh, the first day, followed by two low carb days, then a high carb day again, and then three low carb days. So during the high carb days, uh, like let's say for example, Monday is gonna be my high carb day. I'll do a normal workout. Uh, Tuesday is gonna be a more intense workout like leg day where I can utilize those carbohydrates I ate all day on Monday. So basically your high carb day is, is for your intense workout on the next day. But in reality, basically it's the, in the whole scheme of everything, the high carb day is to replenish your glycogen levels because you're, you've been low on energy and to, to fuel your muscles again, to get your body uh, amped up uh, to, uh, and your metabolism firing again. So. Um, this is basically how I've done it. Uh, now you don't have to do it super aggressive. Now there, there's a more aggressive one where you can do one high carb day followed by three low carb days. High carb day again, by three low carb days. Uh, I tried that one for a while. I felt a little bit more lethargic on that one because I'm going low carb days for three, low, three days straight followed by one uh, high carb day and on and off, on and off indefinitely. So the problem I felt with that one is with the, the excessive amount of low carb days I was really depleting my energy I felt like I needed to up the carbs again so I decided to do the moderately aggressive one um, which gives me a, a high carb day in between that it kind of give me a little break and replenish my energy so I can get more energy to work out again so um, if you're just starting off, you can probably do the on and off, on and off one, where it's kind of like a high, low, high, low, low, low. Uh, that's a little bit more easier to maintain because not everyone will get accustomed to not having carbohydrates during the day. It is a big change. So if you're just starting off on carb cycling, I'd probably recommend the on and off uh, method, just doing every other day. So again, on your high carb days, you're eating at your total daily energy expenditure. On your low carb days, you are eating at a deficit um, and cutting the carbs uh, pretty significantly. So, so that's carb cycling in a nutshell. The other thing I forgot to say is that the, at the end of last Friday, so I was towards the end of my five weeks, I was feeling really, really crazy and I hit a plateau. Now, what happens when you hit a plateau? So reading up in uh, one of the books I, I read that your body can only go through a carb cycle for so long and after the carb cycle you start to plateau so I was still eating at a deficit but I wasn't seeing any weight change so what happened there what happened was your body 
learns and adapts to what you uh, what what you're giving it. So it learned its tricks. It learned your trick on carb cycling. So in those three weeks, three, four, five weeks, it started learning how to, how it's being fed. So what happens at that case is you need to do a slingshot. Uh, with your diet, you just need to go ahead and flood your system with carbohydrates. So, what I'm doing now is I'm breaking my carb cycle. I'm going on three to five days of nothing but high carbs. And what that's going to do, it's going to flood my system with carbohydrates and replenish my glycogen levels. Now, that does not mean that I'm going to go binge eat and go eat McDonald's or burgers or whatnot. No. <laughs> you can have your one cheat meal. I mean, use utilize flexible dieting, okay? So factor in your cheat meals in with your high carb days. So if you want to get that cheat meal, um, you know, calculate how much that meal is going to be, readjust your macros, and you can actually make it work for you as long as you're eating at at your maintenance level or below. If you're trying to lose weight or if you're trying to gain, then it really doesn't matter. But uh, on my high carb days, I'm going to eat healthy carbs. Uh, I'm basically going to have four to five days of straight high carb days and I'm eating the amount of calories. I'm still tracking it. So I'm basically eating at my maintenance level. So I shouldn't be gaining or losing any weight during this time. What I'm basically doing is manipulating my hormones so that my body thinks, okay, this is the new style of uh, food. I'm getting, I'm feeding my body so much food for these five days. It's going to be like, okay, it's going to ramp up your metabolism. And then right when that happens, Next week, I'm going to start my carb cycle all over again, introducing those low carb days. And what that does, it, it ramps up and burns your, it starts your stomach up to burn like a furnace again, and it's going to burn off that fat. And then you can start the carb cycle and you'll see the weight start going down. So I'm going to go ahead and continue on my high carb days for the next three, four to five days. See how I feel. I'm going to be keeping track of my weight. I'm gonna see some fluctuations in my weight, maybe two or three pounds because of the water that I'm retaining, but I'm not gonna worry about that too much. But now if I start seeing it going in excess, I gotta reevaluate my diet and see if something needs to be changed. Because obviously if it's going higher than those two or three pounds, something is wrong in my diet. So I don't seem to uh, believe that that's gonna happen to me because I know how to track my macros and so forth. So uh, I don't see it as an issue. Uh, anyways, that is how to calculate your macros in a nutshell. The other portion, um, sorry I'm running out of time, I'm trying to keep this video under 20 minutes? Is it 20? 20, 30 minutes? Hopefully it's not going over 30 minutes. I know this video is going to be super long. Uh, the other thing that you'll want to need to do is uh, if you guys have a smartphone, which almost everyone does, uh, look for the app called MyFitnessPal. Now MyFitnessPal is the way you can track your macro is so much easier and it's a food tracker and it's a food log. Uh, once you go in there, I'm going to do another video on how to utilize that or use that app, but it's very simple. Go into the app, you can click add food, uh, it will break down breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks and the cool thing about the app is you can use your camera, there's a barcode scanner on it. So if you have a favorite food or like a protein source, let's say I had a box of cereal and I want to know the macros on it, instead of reading it off or writing it down, you can use your app tracker, MyFitnessPal, scan the barcode and the macros will pop in there right away. So you can use that to build your meals based on your macro. So if you know your calories is total 2,000 and you know your protein amounts and carb amounts, you can factor these in and look at all the different foods you're going to eat to hit those macros. And that's basically how you build your meals for the week and then do the carb cycle. So I'll try to do another video on my fitness pal. That'll probably be a shorter video, but I know this is a lot of information to uh, go through. So go ahead and rewatch the video if you need to. If you have any additional questions, feel free to comment below. I know we went through a lot of information today. So to summarize, what we did is we, we learned how to track our macros. We learned how to calculate our total daily energy expenditure, which is our maintenance level, the calories that we need to consume just to maintain our body weight. If you're looking to lose weight, you need to eat at a deficit below that maintenance level. If you're looking to gain weight, you need to eat above it. And we're going to use MyFitnessPal to track our food to see how many calories and carbs and fat are in certain foods that we want to eat, factor that in. Uh, and you know exactly how much you need to eat a day now. So do that. 
try that out, see if it works for you. If it doesn't, let me know. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to comment below and I will get back to them as soon as possible. But that's basically how I'm planning to calculate my macros and what I've been doing for my diet. I'll let you guys know how this slingshot diet of mine works, um, whether it uh, reactivates my carb cycling or not, and let's see if the pounds start coming off. Right now I'm sitting steady at 160 to 162 pounds and uh, hopefully after this week and I uh, once I get back in the carb cycle we'll see the weight start coming off so uh, anyways that's calculating your macros thanks again for tuning in guys sorry this was so long sorry that I'm doing screenshots instead of the actual live video that I want to record I promise you I will redo this entire video in the future once I get my new laptop if you guys want to help me get my new laptop send me some money i wouldn't mind a new laptop so i can make more videos for you guys but until then thanks again for checking this out this is chris fan fitness i know it sounds corny whatever come back again make sure you click like and subscribe thank you for watching my video stay fit and healthy guys see you later